Welcome back, everybody, to The Practical Woodsman. Got a really uh, great conversation for you this week. Going to talk about bug out bags. I'm actually going to show off my bug out bags. How many do you need? Should you only pack one? Uh, if you have more than one, should they be packed the same? What sorts of things do I have in my bug out bag? And uh, what is the th my thinking behind my bug out bag? You know, these are emergency bags that you can just grab and go. You can have emergency, a whole emergency kit ready just in case things in the world don't work out too good. So let's get into that discussion. Stick around. Welcome back, everybody, to The Practical Woodsman. Uh, I'm Rut, your host. I'm happy to have you back with me. And uh, skip the week because I, I wanted to get this particular presentation done right. And uh, I think I have. We're going to be talking about bug out bags. And to get us started, uh, this might be, <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see how I pull this off for those of you who are just listening to the podcast, you know, the audio podcast. I'm going to try to keep her as interesting as I possibly can, but I hope you understand at the same time I'm going to be showing some things off, and uh, the video is probably, in this case, the superior medium to be uh, taking advantage of this content. Uh, I want to talk about the biggest mistakes I see in other people's bug out bags, my philosophy behind the whole thing, my thinking of the whole thing, and uh, things of that nature. The biggest mistake I notice when I look at other people's bug out bags there, there's several number one is that I notice that people only pack for themselves and I think that's a big mistake to pack as if whatever you got in that bag only has to, has to sustain you do you not think that in an emergency there will be other vulnerable people in need that have not prepared as you have are you not going to want to help those folks and you know the idea is to be able to help without suffering a loss yourself you don't want to suffer a loss you want to be able to give from excess or surplus i have a currently seven-year-old daughter and i'll never forget last time i took her to the the old movie theater and i thought you know they're going to have the air conditioning on or they're not going to have the heat on high enough to suit me and uh, and I'm going to get cold while we're there ah, I know what I'll do I'll take an extra sweater and so I put that sweater in my backpack before we left I said honey do you want to grab a jacket or something now nah, now nah, I'm fine she says so we get there and if my memory is not mistaken it was air conditioning and you know 30 minutes into the movie we're both freezing well guess what as her father I am obligated <laughs> to give up my sweater for her comfort and then what's that mean for me well it means I'm sitting there freezing my hoochie katoochie off for that entire movie I hated it what I resolved in that moment is from now on when I go to the movie theater with my daughter I'm not taking one sweater I'm taking two sweaters whether she thinks she's going to get cold or not whether we end up using them or not but the whole idea is for me to be able to give from my surplus you know think about a real situation where everything's falling apart and everybody's going crazy and things are uncertain you're going to want to be able to give from surplus you're going to want to be able to help some other folks out because even though I'm prepared and even though you're interested in being prepared the majority of people are not uh, the majority of people are not going to be prepared so there's going to be good people out there that you're going to want to be able to help now think about this having being prepared in different for different circumstances requires a different type of preparedness doesn't it in other words 
I can prepare a bag that is great for me just slinging over my shoulder and heading out, whether I'm in the city or I'm in the woods or whatever. But what if I'm in a situation where I can shelter at home in my basement? Well, that that changes everything, doesn't it? So my approach to being prepared in my basement has to be different than me just slinging a, a bag over my shoulder uh, and trying to get out of some city. Another thing is in your car. Maybe you're going to be able to stay with your vehicle the whole time. Well, that requires a different kind of preparedness, doesn't it? So that's my approach to the whole thing. I, I have three main uh, situations that I have prepared for. One is I'm sheltering in my basement. And so I've got that allows for all kinds of canned foods, uh, he heavy cots, heavy blankets, all sorts of flashlights and you know gallons of water and those sorts of things. Then I have actually a bag I'm going to show you here this week is my vehicle survival kit. It's actually an enormous uh, backpack that was given to me by a neighbor and I said well I can do something with that and what I've done is I've put all of uh, my gear into it that I would be able to survive out of tools food blankets all sorts of things in this enormous backpack it's not something that I can carry into the woods on my back so this has become my vehicle survival pack and uh, I just put it in my vehicle and it stays out there all the time and then the third one is just the the bag I just sling over my my shoulder and I'm mobile I can go anywhere I can walk anywhere I can take this with me and that of course is the one that's the lightest it contains the fewer the fewest things and it's really I mean it's it's an emergency pack in every sense of the word it, it's not a luxurious thing there I don't have any luxurious items in there it's really just to squeak by and just to get by. Talking about this first biggest mistake that I notice, you know, having extra doesn't just apply to sweaters. You want to think about having a little bit of abundance in your food. How about gloves? You know, you want, you want to make sure if you've got gloves in there, you want to make sure that maybe you've got a spare set of gloves for whoever ends up surviving along with you. How about uh, flashlights? Yeah, we'll get into flashlights a little bit. I never just carry one flashlight. You want to have, you want to be able to spread these things around to people that you trust, and that uh, you want to be able to help from from surplus. In other words, you do not want to have to help in a way that you take a personal loss. Number two, biggest mistakes I notice in people's bug out bags: they don't pack with a certain, they don't pack with all four seasons in mind or with time in mind. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Uh, for example, a fuel canister. Let's say that you pack a fuel canister into a bag that you're then gonna store in your car, propane canister or something like that, you know. What is the problem with that? Well, if you're storing it in your car in the winter time, that might be fine, but it won't be fine if it's 100 degrees in the summer and you that pack is sitting in your car baking in you know hundreds of degrees temperatures my recommendation there is to never pack a canister in the first place you want to have other solutions in mind for that that can take the place of a canister a canister uh, a fuel canister is just not safe enough to store and be certain that nothing will happen to it that it won't explode or anything like that but if you have ways of starting fire, sure ways of starting fire, uh, well then there's no reason to carry a canister and actually just making a, a small fire is a lot more reliable in, in all conditions than canisters are and you can store things for starting fires that are not at risk of catching fire in a hot car. Alright, here's another thing to think about along the same lines. Batteries. So, you know, let's say that you shove some batteries into a, an emergency pack and now you're storing that in your vehicle and then, um, you know, say you do it in the summer or the fall or whatever, which is fine, but what happens when winter rolls around? What happens to batteries as that pack is sitting out in the car 
in freezing temperatures all winter long. Remember, these emergency packs are going to be left untouched for long periods of time. You know, the, the preferable situation is that you never actually have to ever use them. That's the preferred thing. So they're going to be sitting there untouched, unbothered for long periods of time. What's going to happen to any batteries you've got stored in your emergency pack as seasons come and go? Right? Something to think about. How about a feather down or like a, a goose down blanket or bag of some sort? which you've compressed for your emergency kit or your emergency bag. What's the problem with that? The problem with that is that that's not the proper way to store feathers. Down, you know, goose down, duck down, duck down. And it's not the proper way to store them. So if we're talking about a bag that's just sitting untouched for long periods of time, let's say a couple years go by and an emergency does happen, you pull out your down bag or your down blanket what's going to be the problem the problem is that it's been compressed for two years and now it may not fluff up and if it doesn't fluff up it won't insulate you so there are better alternatives than down blankets even though i love down blankets i really there's just very few things are as great as a down blanket as far as warmth to weight ratio but not ideal for an emergency getaway bag either one in your car or one that you're going to sling over your shoulder you know grab off the wall throw over your shoulder and get out of the house and go number three i noticed that a lot of people don't really have a time frame in mind for when they create their bug out bags one thing that is not realistic is to assume that you're going to survive forever on a on an emergency bag if you're going to have a philosophy for while building the bag, you have to have a, a certain length of time in mind for what that is going to ideally work for. And then, based on that philosophy, then formulate what's going to go into your bag. Number four, I see people packing too many luxuries. A lot of luxury items. You don't need a seat, you know, like these uh, collapsible backpacking seats you don't need something like that for an emergency situation it's a, a real luxury remember we, we want to survive and get by and we want to do that in the most practical way possible we don't want to be putting things into a, an emergency bag that doesn't need to be there now in my backpacking bag when i'm going out on an excursion out in a long excursion out into the woods you know i'm going to be out there for a week i might take something like you know a luxury item like that but not for my emergency bag for my emergency bag bag it's fine for me to sit on the ground or to sit on a rock or to sit on a log or any of these things you know i can do that for a few days <laughs> until an emergency has passed now having said that don't confuse me saying you shouldn't carry luxury items for saying that you shouldn't carry any comfort items at all as you're going to see in my setup here I always take a flask or a bottle of whiskey and I always try to make sure to take coffees and teas and things like that now do I absolutely need coffee no but it's such a an easy item to carry that goes such a long way in making me feel relaxed and calm and normal right so it's a comfort item that is worth more than the sum of its parts let's put it that way it, it serves a bigger purpose than me just having something nice to drink uh, it's gonna make me feel comfortable which is gonna help keep me calm it's gonna help me feel a sense of normalcy in a, probably an otherwise scary situation potentially same thing with a flask of whiskey. You know, if I get to a place where I can sleep on that first night or that second night and I can take a few nips of that uh, bourbon and let it uh, warm my insides and calm me and feel all good and nice and enjoy that, well, then I'll be much more clear-headed. I'll be able to make decisions better and that sort of thing. I mean, I, I know that sounds like a con contradiction, but I'm not talking about getting toasted on the whiskey. I'm just talking about 
having some sips of it because it's something I really enjoy. It's something that uh, calms me. It's something I use to relax in the evenings from time to time. And um, so a comfort item like that is not a terrible thing. The number five biggest mistake I notice people make when they're showing off their emergency bags or their bug out bags is that they they pack single meals. So like these backpacking meals where you just add boiling water and then you've got a, a meal. In fact, I've noticed on the internet they're selling these uh, like survival kits, which are big buckets of like dozens and dozens of these freeze-dried meals. Um, that is not my approach. I think it's foolish to pack single meals. First of all, you don't know if you're always going to be in a situation where you can boil water and you know get that water boil and pour that in and enjoy just this beautiful, wonderful, gourmet meal. But the other thing is that they're not versatile. So my approach, my preference is versatility in my approach to what I put in my bags. And you're going to see here, these are things that you can get from your grocery store. They'll last in there for a long, long time. And they spread out very, I mean, you can really do a lot of things with these items with just a few simple things like boiling cubes and spices. Uh, number six, in a lot of survival bags that I see people show off, they're not prepared for multiple seasons. So let me give you an example. They might create their a, a bug out bag. They might load up a bug out bag and it might be middle of August or, you know, I, I realize that I'm talking to folks all over the world here. So let's say the hottest month of the year for you. And so when they create their bag outside, it's like a thousand degrees, you know. So they're not thinking about what if I'm cold <laughs> in the middle of the coldest night in the winter time. Well, what happens when your bug out bag sits there untouched for months at a time and winter rolls around and you grab a bag that you prepared with summer in mind because that was the season you were in when you created the, the bug out bag and now you've grabbed your bag and you have to flee into the forest. What are you going to do? You don't have any sweaters in there, no gloves, nothing to keep warm. You, you're going to be in a tough spot, aren't you? So if you live in a zone that includes all four seasons, you want a bag that is prepared for all four seasons. If you're preparing it in the dead of winter, you want to make sure that you also have spring, fall, and summer in mind as you're putting it together. If you're preparing the bag in the heart of summer, uh, even so, you don't want to be thinking about conditions right in that moment you want to be thinking more broadly um, this pack must have things in it for uh, winter time as well because who knows when an emergency or a, a situation is going to occur where you need to grab the bag and go number seven biggest mistake and i would like to uh, give another youtube channel another youtube creator credit for this idea now it was something that i was that i have always already had in mind, but he was the first person uh, that I saw vocalize it on his own channel, and that channel is Waypoint Survival. So if if you haven't seen that feller's uh, YouTube channel, he's a charming guy, really interesting channel. I personally don't agree with his with every approach that he takes to these things, but what I did like is that he said you don't want to look like military so i know guys you know fellers especially we like the way these military bags look and you can get them for next to nothing and they're really well made on things like amazon but in a real situation where society might be collapsing or something like that you really don't want to be walking around looking like you're military you want to blend in you want to look as civilian as possible so i really like that he brought that up he's he's the one who i heard the only other person i've heard vocalize that and i completely agree with it but i want to give him credit because he he's the first person i saw mention it so when you get a when you go shopping for the the bug out bag the bag itself that you're going to use 
as an emergency bag. You don't want to be buying something in camo. I I hate camo, by the way. I don't know why everybody, why so many guys like camo. I'll tell you why I don't like camo. Uh, when I drop something in the woods, I want to be able to find it. <laughs> I, I don't want to be, you have no idea, perhaps, how hard it is to find something that you drop in the middle of the forest that is littered and covered with leaves and stuff like that even when the item is not camouflaged so you know I, I bought this knife which is I love it it's a belt knife but I bought it off of a, a feller on the internet that because they had stopped making them well I'll show it to you this is the Pathfinder mountain lion they had stopped making it and I really wanted this knife and so I said you know, maybe maybe I can find somebody who has one that they they wouldn't mind to sell, and I bought it off of him. And it, it, when the sheath come, it was it was camouflage, and I just I hate that it's camouflage because if this falls out of my pack or falls off my belt or if I drop this out in the woods, what was already going to be hard to find is now invisible. It's going to be the hardest thing for me to find it, and and you know I just don't want to make it any more easy. <laughs> To lose things in the woods than it already is but anyway for purposes of the conversation we're having right now you don't want camouflage you don't want a military style pack you don't want desert brown anything like that remember you want to blend in as a civilian because if there's social unrest or anything like that there's probably going to be military around and um, you know they're going to be doing the things that they feel like they need to do uh, but you don't want to be mistaken for them. Now, again, let's talk about my approach. I have three different approaches. I actually have four different approaches. Four different approaches. I forgot to mention one. Surviving in my basement at home. So I stock up on canned foods, plenty of water, things like that, um, which we're not going to get into today. I'll show you that on another occasion. Uh, number two is car or vehicle or truck. So I want a kit in my vehicle and remember that kit of course is not going to be as comprehensive as the one in my basement but it is going to be much more comprehensive than anything I can carry on my back or anything I can carry in my pockets my number three approach is being on foot all right so staying at home being in my vehicle being on foot being on foot is just grabbing a pack slinging it over my shoulder I can go anywhere and then number five is no pack or carrying anything at all only what I have in my pockets that is number four so again my four approaches basement vehicle being on foot having nothing just having what's in my pockets now let's get into taking a look at these bags I've got uh, I've got my two bags here. The one I was telling you about is this one right here, this massive, it's like an incredible hawk sized pack. And uh, I had a neighbor, I think he dug that out of the trash. And he said, do you want this? And I took a look at that and I said, man, that's that's ideal for like a, a car or a truck survival setup. So yeah, I'll take it. Now it is an actual backpack. It's got the backpack straps and everything. So it is an actual backpack. But I mean, the thing is just so massive that uh, I, I could carry it in, I reckon I could carry it, you know, I might be able to get it a mile, two miles back into woods, you know, park my car on a road and, and get maybe two miles into the woods with this thing. But the, I mean, it is massive and I'll show you all the great stuff I got in there. And then of course, here's my other bag. This is when I'm on foot and uh, love this pack. This is an LL Bean pack. And uh, it's 26 liter, and it carries just just what I need to to survive in all seasons, hopefully. So let's get into this. Let's take a look at my vehicle survival bag first. Because weight is not a consideration in a car survival pack, I can carry things obviously that I wouldn't be able to carry in any other circumstances. And I've got my Boreal 21 folding buck saw here. And this thing is, uh, I've showed that off before. I don't carry it in a backpack or, you know, in a backpack and pack. And of course, I don't carry it in my, my emergency bag that I've put together for being on foot. 
but there's nothing stopping me from carrying it in this survival pack for my vehicle because weight is not a consideration. In addition to that saw, I have a hatchet. This is a hickory handled hatchet. There's there's no nothing stopping me from carrying that even though it's very heavy. Whiskey. Remember what I said? Now I've got this in a repurposed bottle. The, the whiskey inside of it is not not the whiskey that's on the tag there. Uh, but I think I've got a hundred proof whiskey in there. And you know I could just nip on that for several nights in a row just to kind of unwind, take the edge off, calm down, relax, get a good night's sleep, not worry about the chaos and the scary stuff happening out in the world and hopefully wake up the next day feeling a little bit more refreshed, clear-minded, ready to go. All right, now we're getting into some food here. Do you see what I've got here? This is a container full of oats, instant oats. And I think brown sugar, brown maple sugar is the flavor of them. The container is about the size of a, oh, a medium-sized peanut butter jar plastic jar and uh, I've, I've repurposed it I filled it up with with these oats now the reason why oats are so great is because they'll last forever in more ways than one first of all they'll last in storage in my survival bag here for a long long time without going bad but the other thing as I've explained in past episodes is that uh, th these need no preparation except for to pour some water on top of them. Now that's probably not the best way to eat them, but you can you can eat them that way and they taste just fine. Just pour a little bit of cold water and you're ready to go. The third reason is that they go a long, long way. There's probably, I don't know, in this little container here, or this medium sized container here, I could probably stretch that out to 30 meals. And I, I ain't even exaggerating about that. That's probably 30 meals right there. And not hard to carry. Lasts a long time. Very simple. Next up is this container. Which is, it's the, it's pra it is the same size as the other container. And this is rice. So again, like a medium size peanut butter can. A plastic peanut butter can full of rice. This rice will last forever and ever in storage and it'll go a long long way again probably another 30 meals right here you know how rice works just a little bit of rice goes a long long way and here's another nice thing about rice if you just carry a few simple spices you can do all sorts of things with this rice so that you don't burn out on the rice but again we're not looking at luxury here I mean, we're not trying for a life of luxury here this is to get us through tough times so that we can go back to our life of luxury let's get into the main compartment here this thing got a container here of salt not a little container a big container because remember I've got the space for it weight is not an issue so I got this whole big container of salt it can be used with the rice it can even be used with the oats for whatever reason but plenty of salt there and it'll go a long way I can share this with people you know and that's the thing with this this kit here is that this rice would keep me alive for months <laughs> if I stretched it out and you know I, I switch back and forth from the uh, the oats but I can share these things with other people too without taking a personal loss got a container there of honey honey is another would be another comfort item I mean, if you think about these um, energy packs that you buy from the store for backpackers, where they're just like in these little packs and you rip the corner and you squeeze it into your mouth, I, basically what it is is just honey. It just gives you immediate energy. Powdered milk. Again, I have these in containers, in plastic containers that I have repurposed, and I, I do that when I go to the grocery store. If I'm buying something anyway, Another consideration that I'll keep in mind is what sort of thing is it being sold in and can I reuse that for something else? A lot of bushcrafters swear up and down on this Old Bay seasoning. I'm not a big fan of it. 
I know a lot of bushcrafters sell it like, man, it's it's the best thing ever created. I, I don't like it. I like this Latin seasoning instead. It's called Sazon, which just means season seasoning. Uh, it's spelled S-A-Z-O with an accent mark in Sazon. And you can just use this for everything. I put this on everything. Even if I do have these, you know, backpack and freeze-dried meals, I take this sazon with me in my backpack, and I'll I'll season that even more, and it just makes the flavor pop. So sazon is my all-purpose seasoning of choice. This here, which is the same size as the container that I'm carrying my milk in, my powdered milk. Can you guess what that is? It looks like sugar or something, doesn't it? That is baking soda. Why do you reckon I'm carrying a little tub of baking soda with me? I carry this in everything, by the way. The reason I'm taking baking soda with me is because it can be used for so many things. If you have heartburn, you take half a tablespoon of baking soda, mix that in with a cup of water and drink it, and it'll it'll take care of your heartburn or your your stomach acid or anything acid reflux it'll just completely negate it you can sprinkle that in your shoes so imagine that you're out in a situation where you you don't have any spare socks you're wearing the same shoes every day wearing the same socks every day you're trying to wash your socks but shoes are starting to stink up they're starting to feel pretty you know your feet are starting to feel pretty soupy in those boots day after day you're going to want some of this baking soda to pour in your shoe. It'll absorb all that odor and make your, sho your shoes fresh. You pour it on your feet. You can use it sort of like soap in that uh, if you're not in a place where you can take a bath or anything, you can dump some of this in your hand and rub that under your armpits and freshen up your armpits, freshen up the other parts of your body. I saw a thing the other day says uh, human uh, sweat actually on its own does not smell too bad it's the bacteria and stuff that gets in the sweat so when you rub yourself down with this baking soda it negates all that uh, lots of other things you can do with this I'm trying to think of some of the other oh you can brush your teeth with this in fact when I was growing up as a kid uh, and times were tough uh, we, we often brushed our teeth with baking soda and the only thing you do is you'd take the top off here wet your toothbrush or let's say you're using your finger even but you would wet your finger or your toothbrush and and pat that into the baking soda and it'll cake the end of your toothbrush and you can brush your teeth with that you can use this as a mouthwash uh, to, to freshen your breath so I mean there's just no end to the uses of baking soda I carry it for everything there I've got a, bi a big sandwich bag full of uh, spaghetti dry spaghetti or pasta whatever you want to call it. I like the spaghetti and what I've done is I've taken them out of the box I've broke them in two <clears throat> and broken in two they fit into the sandwich bag and again this is like many many days worth of food here uh, that I can even combine with the rice got a couple packs here of yellow peas Again, peas or something. You Yellow peas are nice because they don't really need to soak as long as uh, green peas, is my understanding. So, again, just two snack packs full of peas, yellow peas. And these peas will go a long, long way. Uh, look at all the food I've got here. Now, remember, this is my car survival kit. The stuff won't go bad in the car. It'll store for a long, long time. It'll go a long, long ways. And it, it is versatile. These things are versatile. I can combine some of the peas with the pasta. I can combine some of the peas with the, the rice. I can combine some of the pasta with the rice. All these things are very versatile. And here I've got a big sandwich bag or a freezer bag full of navy beans, just dried navy beans. Now remember, we're talking about a situation where I'm not on foot, I'm in my car. So uh, theoretically, I have plenty of time to soak these during the day eat some of these other things while these are soaking and I can have a big old meal on many many different nights and I can spread these things around and share with other people in need got a container here of sugar so the container for my sugar 
is exactly the same size as the container for my salt. This will go a long, long way. Remember, I've also got the, the small bottle of honey. <sighs> you know what this is? I've got a rolled canvas bag here that I'm showing off for the camera. This is a spice kit and utensils. There we go. I got two different spoons and forks in there. And then I've got these small containers of spices. Remember, I'm taking basic dry goods that I can then spice up with these spices. Uh, I got cinnamon here, cumin, uh, paprika, tabasco, bouillon, garlic, pepper, olive oil. Here I've got uh, several plastic plates. This is like thick plastic. I got it from Walmart. And I'm carrying a big uh, kettle. This is the Norwegian, the large Norwegian kettle that everybody's so fond of. I think it's 1.7. Anyway, it's got the copper bottom. It's stainless steel. Uh, I'm carrying that. And that's uh, for a, a camp somewhere off the side of the road or in the woods there. Right direct, you know, right off the side of the road. And within there, I've also got some plastic plates. And not just one, I'm carrying three so that I can, uh, again, I can share without taking a personal loss. <sighs> Shelter. I have a large, I think it's either nylon or polyester tarp here. And it's not an expensive tarp. 10 by 8 or 10 by 12, something like that. But you, you see it doesn't take up a lot of space. But when it spreads out, it can create a very large shelter for multiple people. I have my BCB British water bottle and mug combo here. The uh, NATO stainless steel crusader cooking cup that goes with the BCB mug. And I've got that into a, in a case here where I can sling that over my shoulder and leave and go, go find water if, if I need to. Here I have a cook pot. This is a titanium put cook pot. It's got these, these holding handles here and it's got the bail handle. It's titanium and on the inside I've got my coffee, a little container of coffee. Lots of boiling cubes. I'm going to want lots of those boiling cubes. You know why? Because maybe I want to spice up my rice. Maybe I want to spice up my pasta with these boiling cubes. Maybe I can find some wild edibles and I want to spice up and make a stew using these boiling cubes as my broth. And then I've got a bunch of hard candies. These hard candies I've learned are really nice to have in any situation. You know, you can put one of these hard candies, this is a black licorice uh, and I think root beer and watermelon. but. Pop a hard candy in your mouth, and uh, it can give you energy. It can take a bad taste out of your mouth. It can make you feel comfortable. You know, it can serve a lot of different purposes. There's my cook pot, and that's a pretty good sized cook pot. That's not something I'd take necessarily on a backpacking trip, but for this survival kit, it works fine since weight is not a a problem. Within this larger pack I have a smaller <clears throat> pack that I got from somebody gifted this to me years ago from REI. The thing about this pack is that it's very minimalistic. If I needed to go get some water or something I could throw some necessaries in there along with my water bottle even if I wanted to and head out and do some scouting away from my car and uh, have something to on my back that I can carry carry necessary things and maybe I want to carry a blanket in there or something like that just in case I get lost or can't get back to my car. Remember I told you you don't want to take the goose down because the, the goose down can't spend long periods of time compressed. Another thing about goose down is that these backpacking goose down blankets or sleeping bags if they take one spark from the fire you got sewing to do because they burn through so fast I mean it once it's happened, it's done. You can't just run over there and brush it off because by the time it takes for you to get over there and brush it off, the damage is done. So this is a five pound uh, wool blanket. And this thing, I double it 
and cover myself up with it that way. And so instead of just being covered with one layer of wool, I'd be covered with two layers of wool. In the coldest months of the year, I could get a real nice fire going, cover up with this blanket, me and maybe even another person, stay comfortable by the fire, not having to worry about catching on fire because wool is naturally anti, uh, not anti-flammable, it's uh, fire retardant. So a lot of people incorrectly tell you that wool is um, anti-flammable. That's not true. It will catch fire. It will burn. Uh, but it's naturally fire retardant, which means that it doesn't burn easy. A coal really has to sit on there for a long time for it to burn. But, you know, you're covered up with this right next to a fire. You will stay warm. You will survive. Maybe you won't be as cozy as you would be under a, a zero degree Fahrenheit goose down sleeping bag. But you'll you'll survive the night. The last thing I have in this main compartment here is a big tarp. Now the, this tarp can be used to put down a, a ground cover to sleep on. But let's say something happens to my other sh shelter tarp. Well then I could create covering using this. This is the heavy weight tarp material that you can buy from that I can buy from Walmart for not too much I think $20 or something like this and it's a very large covers a large footprint and again I, I do that in mind with the idea that it's not only going to be me potentially sleeping on this thing or needing this thing but I might need be, me I might need to share the space with somebody else who I'm trying to help out take a look at this front pocket here cordage you know you can never have enough cordage and that's paracord I think it's 550 paracord here I have spare batteries and you go well what you just got done telling us about batteries how they'll wear out in the cold you just got to be aware that they will do that so you know maybe get into a habit of every once in a while replacing those batteries I've got some cordage in here you know what that's for that's for this battery pack that I'm carrying this battery pack though is a solar battery pack Anyway, I can't remember the, the measurement that they use, but I think it's 40,000 capacity. And uh, it's got these solar panels that fold out. You can get these off uh, Amazon for not too much. And I have used this. The solar panels on here, on a perfectly sunny day, need about a day and a half to completely charge this battery pack. Just these, these panels on their own. But again, if you're in a situation where you're in a car or something like that, and you're kind of camped out by the side of the road somewhere, uh, you might have that sort of time uh, to open this thing up, set it out while you're cooking, while you're doing certain things around the car, and, um, and that'll work just fine. So don't forget, if you're gonna buy something like this, you're gonna want a little pack like this where you can also carry cordage to charge things uh, whatever you're carrying maybe you're carrying chargeable flashlights chargeable batteries those sorts of things you're going to want to make sure you've got that cordage in your little pack there for that headlamp here's my sewing and fishing kit I showed that off in the previous episode I'm not going to show it off this week but if you're interested in seeing what I've got in there just check out the previous episode got it in a little Altoids 10 for those of you listening those little Altoid 10s are fantastic. I have a flashlight. It's not an expensive flashlight. It's a cheap flashlight. But it's the one. It's the kind that the beam can be adjusted from wide to narrow. And last but not least in this pocket, I have a weather radio. It's a weather radio, uh, AM, FM radio. And it's also a flashlight. It's a crankable radio slash flashlight it also has a solar panel on the top of it I don't know how effective that is I've never used it but I mean as soon as I take this thing outside I see the light click on saying that it's taking a charge this also can serve as a spare battery so you can charge this thing up full and then you can use this to charge other devices 
Let's turn it on and see if it's got any power. When you buy these things, you want to make sure that you're getting a weather band with the radio, especially if you're here in the States. I don't know about in other countries if you guys have a, a dedicated weather band, but you can turn this on. 9 p.m. Ross County Airport. It was 54 degrees under cloudy skies. Now here is the official National Weather Service forecast for the lower Scioto River Valley. Tonight, a slight chance of showers this evening, then rain after midnight. Warmer with lows in the upper 40s. All right. So there you go. That would be, you know, especially if the grid goes down, the the uh, telephone grid goes down, you can't use the data on your phone. Uh, there, there's just a lot of reasons to carry an emergency radio like this. And these, this particular one that I'm showing off on the camera here, these don't cost anything. I think these were the cheapest I could find on Amazon, and they work great. I bought four or five of them, and I've got them scattered all over the place. So I'm, I'm carrying one here in this in this car pack, you know, this car emergency pack, and I also carry them in a foot travel pack. Last pocket or compartment of this backpack, of this car backpack, I have a fire kit. This fire kit I've showed off in lots of videos. I've got these face cotton face pads that I dip in wax. I can get a fire start very easily with those. I also carry in this pack, in this particular fire kit, I carry a lighter that's still in the packaging. I won't take it out of the packaging until I need it in an emergency situation. I have a box of matches. I have a pack of cotton balls that I can use as tinder to get a fire going very easy. I have a ferrocerium rod that can be struck with anything to create a fire. I have 20 or so pieces of fat wood that I have cut down to all oh, about a three inch size, two and a half inch size. So that's my fire kit. You get a lot of fire going with this this simple fire kit. I have a spyglass. This is just a scope. So instead of binoculars, I'm using this scope here. The magnification of it is measured 10 by 40. And it's got a very nice clear picture. It's waterproof, you know, so it won't take on any water, won't cloud up on me. And I, I can use that for who knows what. Who knows what I might need to use that for in a survival situation. But weight's not a problem, so I put it in there. I carry a bandana. I try to carry a bandana in everything, everything that I carry. I got a toboggan here, a wool toboggan, and uh, it's got the ear coverings to keep my ears warm. Uh, so, some people, it's a knit hat. We call them toboggans, where I'm from. I've got some leather working gloves. That's for working with wood, cutting wood, moving, pulling brush, that sort of thing, to keep my fire going, build shelters, anything like that. These, I think, are overlooked. These are baseball caps, and I carry two of them in here. Again, I might want to share one with somebody else. You've been out surviving for a long time. You perhaps do not have access to anywhere where you can wash your hair, uh, where you can comb your hair, where you can tidy up. So a baseball cap resolves that problem when you're just trying to blend in and not you know, draw attention to yourself if you have to go into a store or try to go into town for anything or try to even get back to your house you don't want to draw a lot of attention to yourself a baseball cap will keep you from looking like uh, you know Captain Caveman and that works for girls and boys you, you haven't had time to to you haven't had a mirror you haven't been able to comb your hair you don't have anything to style your hair with but you want to freshen up and look as presentable as possible and not draw attention to yourself a baseball cap is a, is a wonderful way to do that, so I always carry a couple with me. And I have jackets. These are like backpacking jackets, but they're like windbreakers. They keep you warm. I'm not carrying just one. I'm carrying two. Why is that? For the same reason, I don't take just one sweater to the movie theater anymore when I go with my daughter because... I might not be the only person for freezing my, my hoochie-coochie off 
somebody else might be in need also and I want to be able to do something to help them get warm without um, having to take for, away from my own warmth so that is my car pack and I hope you can get a a good look at things here got it all spread out on this table it's a lot of stuff but it all fits into this pack here and um, and so then I I just load this pack up with all these things and just keep it on standby in my vehicle all the time and if the world should ever fall apart you know, the odds are I'm either going to be home or I'm going to be in my vehicle and uh, so I'll have all these things with me and hopefully be able to survive maybe not live like a king but I'll be able to survive pretty comfortably hopefully now let's move on to if I'm on foot and let's talk about that real quick boy time real getting away from me but let's talk about that let me show you what I've got in that much smaller and lighter pack it might be interesting for you to see just what I'll have to do without in the case of being on foot but uh, but I have some things in there to uh, to survive to to get through it at least three days so my my approach for being on foot is I'm thinking in a three-day time frame I think a lot of people will talk about them like 72 hour packs I, I like to think of them as three days three nights and so my pack is made to without any other resources get me by for three days and three nights at least all right now let's talk about I'm on foot not don't have my vehicle I've had to abandon my vehicle and I've had to grab what I can and get out of there or I've had to leave my home I've just had to grab something uh, you know this survival pack off the hangar and head out I don't have access to a vehicle I'm on foot that's what this pack is for this is a 26 liter pack we won't have to spend as much time on this because a lot of the items that I've already showed off in that much larger survival pack uh, I'm I've incorporated into this too but let's take a look at her here on the belt strap there's a pocket and that's where I keep some spare batteries I keep six because my headlamp takes three of these trip away batteries and my handheld flashlight takes three so they already have fresh uh, batteries in them so hopefully the batteries that are already in them I, I don't keep them on all night long I, I just turn them on when I need them to do some kind of task around a, a camp or whatever so hopefully uh, this would last me a long long time you know potentially many weeks uh, using them like that the other hip pouch also has a little pocket there this is the uh, Ridge Runner 26 from LL Bean it's a 26 liter pack there in this little hip pocket here carrying a, a ferro rod with a striker again most of you know what that's for creating sparks and starting fires got a box of matches so those are the hip pockets there's a front pocket here on this pack and you can guess what I got in there I got my Altoids tin and in that I've got my fish kit fishing kit and my sewing kit and again I showed that to you folks uh, in the previous episode this thing lifesaver can do a lot there's no reason for anybody not to be carrying one of these sewing and fish kits it could you could save your life now something interesting here about this setup is typically I would prefer to carry the BCB uh, water bottle and the NATO Crusader cup mug for everything I've got enough that I can spread them about and I could carry one for this pack as well but remember I want to look as much civilian as possible if I'm carrying that BCB uh, British water bottle and Crusader cup mug then it would have to go into the main compartment of this pack and I want to free up the space in that pack so for that reason I've chosen to use the Pathfinder uh, stainless steel bottle one lit it's about one liter of water it lo looks much more civilian you know people carry these Nalgene bottles all the time 
out in public all the time so this does not draw any attention it doesn't particularly look military or anything like that i could drink out of it out on the street and not draw any attention to myself on the other side pocket is my shelter and this is a tarp i found at walmart i think it's a nylon tarp um, very small it's only five feet width by seven feet uh, length in size so this is not a huge thing but i'll pull up some video here of when i have pitched this on backpacking trips and it creates a fine shelter uh, year round this would create a fine shelter i can create a lean-to out of this or i can pitch a line a, you know a line down the middle of it and pitch it kind of like a, a standard tent enough to keep the weather off of me or again i could pit, pitch it like a lean-to and have my fire out front Th this thing is fine uh, for what we're talking about remember we're talking about here's the consideration about this I'm on foot I want to blend into both an urban setting but I also want to be able to get into the woods if I want to and have things to use in the woods that's my thinking around it I want to be able to walk down a main street and blend in in an urban setting not look military look like I'm just a civilian walking from one place to the next with a, a moderate backpack on my pack on my bag and uh, and not draw attention to myself but have what I need to to survive the, it, you know for at least a few days now here's the complaint i had about the guy from um, waypoint survival which man he's tremendous he knows a lot of great stuff i think he was military he did a video where like the world was coming to an end things were getting bad and he got out on an e-bike and was riding down the road on an e-bike and he had a survival bag that he took with him a couple of my complaints about that and this is not a criticism a criticism of him I think it's just a flaw in his in the way he's imagining things would be is that his pack was was enormous it was like a 50 liter or a 60 liter pack it was a Winnebago of backpacks also he gets into the country riding this e-bike e and I think he was riding out of Pittsburgh perhaps or I'm trying to remember where he was at it was a major city but he rides out of the major city it, it was a really well done video so he gets into a place where he sleeps that for that first night and he uh, has a little fire there and, and heats up some water and makes this it was kind of like a mountain house meal you know like a freeze-dried meal Re remember what I said about those freeze-dried meals they're single purpose uh, they're they're not versatile so you can't spread them out and use them for other types of meals like you can't make various meals out of them basically the way they come that's that's the way they are and so first of all his packs too big it's going to draw too much attention he's carrying too many luxury items you're not going to want luxury items you're going to you know you're going to want to blend in you're going to want to be able to to really scoot if you need to scoot you don't want to be hauling 50 pounds of stuff and that's why I really like this 26 liter bag. I'm thinking, I'm trying to think in very realistic terms. So uh, that that would be where um, his thinking on the subject and mine w w would deviate. In fact, I think it'd be great to sit him down and talk to him and and kind of brainstorm and talk about why why would he choose that and why I wouldn't choose that and kind of get uh, dig deeper into his thinking on the matter but maybe he'll see this and maybe I will get to talk to him um, so anyway you want to you want a smaller pack you don't want to carry a bunch of luxury items with you when you're thinking about food you want to think about versatility you know and something that will can be something that doesn't take up much space but that can be but it can really be spread out over multiple days like if you think about rice for example yes it does take some preparation but for just a little bit of space in your pack and a a little bit of weight that stuff will go a long long way especially if you're not gorging on it every day you know you're wanting to eat just a little bit just to stave off the hunger and get you through many many days 
And, um, you know, that's, that's another consideration with those mountain house meals is once they're prepared, well, then you've got to eat them or you've got to throw it out. I mean, you've got to eat it. It's not going to last once you've prepared it. And you're not going to have any way to uh, store it. You, you don't have any re- access to a refrigerator or anything like that. So you're either going to have to, to eat it all once it's prepared in a relatively short amount of time or, or throw it out. And uh, so it seems much wiser to me to carry things like oats, rice, and maybe a, a little spice kit and make those things really last. All right, let's go on. I got this front pocket here. It's kind of like a dump pocket. And again, um, well, this is something you haven't seen yet. These are safety lights. These are the types of lights where you, you shake them and then you snap them and then they glow for 12 hours or something like that. I'm carrying two in this pack. This would be great for an urban setting where you're stuck in a building you don't want to draw a whole lot of attention to yourself but you want some light. Let's say you get stuck in an elevator. Let's say you get stuck in a stairwell. Um, you know these little safety glow lights wonderful. It won't drain your batteries and your flashlights. You, get one out shake it snap it turn you know get the the glow going and then um and then you've got steady con- consistent light for for at least 12 hours carrying two of those also in this i've got my my comb i like to call it <laughs> or my hairbrush it's not really it's it's a baseball cap but You know, if I've had to sleep in an alley, if I've had to sleep in the woods and I get up and I don't have a comb, don't have any way to to fix my hair, that I want to pass myself off as presentable being around other people, I can just put on the ball cap and it takes care of that problem. Let's take a look at the main compartment here. Got my whiskey flask. Again, it's going to be comforting. After probably a frightful and uncertain day, get to a place where I can you know get cozy and try to get a night's sleep have a few nips of of booze before i before i go to sleep here is the same thing in a different format that i had in that other pack this is a battery pack this can charge my phone without any wires it's magnetic on the back so it can charge my iphone now what uh, i've also i'm also carrying a, a pencil in here carrying a field book so i can make notes i can leave notes for other people you, you want to be able to write things down if your phone, you know, your electronics go kaput. You, you want to be able to have a way to write messages, leave messages, those sorts of things. Got my wire in here. Now, what am I going to do if I need to, to charge this thing? And I'm out on foot. In the, in the back part of this pack here, like where a water bladder would go, I carry a 20-watt solar panel. It's actually there are three solar panels and it folds up on itself. And the brand of this is uh, Flexible Solar. I think that's the brand. Uh, Flex Solar. So I got this on sale for 30 bucks, I think, from Amazon. And uh, I tried it out today. You should be seeing some video of that. And um, I'll show you, you know, in the video, you should see that it was not a perfectly sunny day. It was overcast. But it charged that battery from 11% to I think it was 48% in about two hours um, on an overcast day. So if you can imagine if there were no clouds and I had broad broad sunlight, I could get a full charge on that battery in a couple hours, easy. All right, so solar panel. Uh, I think that the capacity of this battery is exactly the capacity of my iPhone 13 Pro Max battery. So what I do is I I connect this to the solar panel, have that charge, and then at night in camp, I would take the battery and charge my phone. Also within that that back pocket there where the water bladder would go, I have a Frog Togs rain poncho. Of course, I use it as a poncho, but I can also use that I can also string that up as a shelter. It actually has a triple use. I can put that down on the ground. I can use that as a ground uh, a ground cover to lay up on and stuff like that. I've got my other emergency weather radio in this sock. And I put it in this sock so that 
it does so the antenna doesn't get broke nothing gets turned on without my permission <laughs> stuff like that let's see if this one has a charge cold front will bring south to southwest wind gusts of 30 to 40 miles per hour at times from late tonight to all right so we've got a charge on there again that thing powers up by a crank here on the side i can charge it that way it's got the solar panel on the front it is a flashlight and uh, also it is a spare battery so I could connect my solar panel my large solar solar panel to this charge the battery up and use it again to charge my phone charge other things by keeping this in this sock this is a a wool sock and by using the other sock to store other things what I have there effectively is a spare set of socks remember this is my pack for being on foot and you, you know imagine how nice it would be after a few days to say you know what I got a fresh pair of socks in my pack uh, that I can change into and I can wash these other socks that I've been wearing for all these days here's my food a container of trail mix and this is this is like a whole bag of trail mix in here and I can spread that out Again, I'm just trying to stave off hunger, right? I'm not gorging myself on them because I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring and I don't want to know, know what the next day is going to bring. So I want to spread these things out and, uh, again, not living a life of luxury here, just getting by. Um, th another great thing about the trail mix, as I think I've mentioned in other episodes, is it, it requires no preparation whatsoever. Um, and that that is an, another sort of criticism that I had of uh, the Waypoint Survival Feller I didn't feel like he had enough food that you could just pull out and eat, which would be superior to anything that requires preparation in a real emergency situation. And so then here, you see this container is about half the size of this. My trail mix container is like, a, again, a regular, regular sized peanut butter plastic container. And then I've got another container which is about half the size of that, and it's full of instant oats. Now you say that's not very many oats, yeah, but remember they expand. When you add them to water, they expand. So there's probably, I think there's seven packets of oats in there. That's seven meals in just this little tiny container. I can eat them hot, but if, I, if I'm not in a situation where I can heat up some water or anything, I can just pour those into my mug and, uh, and eat those with cold water. Here's the other sock my other wool sock and what I've got in there is my gomboy saw and remember this gomboy will do anything that collapsible boreal 21 saw will do and it weighs a fraction of the weight uh, you just have to know how to use it right the reason I've got it in that sock, sock is because I don't want it tearing up the inside of my backpack it's got kind of a sharp edge here on the side of the blade and so I put it in this wool sock to protect my the insides of my backpack and again because of that system there I've got a spare set of socks they're not just taking up space in there they're actually serving a purpose within my pack this is my toiletries bag and within here within my toiletries bag I have small travelers underarm deodorant wet wipes I can use that to wipe my bum I can use that to wash parts of my body my privates my underarms those sorts of things I like to get them so that they don't have they they come in different packages uh, this is a, a not a huge pack package but what I don't like are the packages that just have the glued you know they're like you pull back the paper lid and then you close the paper lid and, and it sticks well as those rub around in your pack and everything uh, that top will stop closing so I, I prefer to get them with a, an actual hard top that actually clicks and closes and clicks like that oh I've got some soap this is just concentrated soap It's body soap I can use it to wash my hair I can use it to wash my body um, I can use it to wash dishes this is all-purpose soap it's centronella scented I have a small uh, bottle here of medic uh, of medicine so what I do is I carry a, a leave we call it here in the States and that takes away muscle pains, back pain, that sort of thing, and relieves that. I'm also carrying uh, Excedrin for headaches and things of that nature. 
Now what I don't have in here, which is on my list to add to this, is some diarrhea medicine. I always try to carry diarrhea medicine. But what I do have, you see this little, this little thing here? That's my baking soda. Remember what I can do with my baking soda. I can brush my teeth. I can cure my heartburn. I can pour that in my shoes. I can pat it under my arms. I can do all sorts of things with it. I can p run it through my hair, in, in fact, uh, and, and kind of take some of the oil out of my hair. I have some uh, triple antibiotic salve. I have a foldable toothbrush. What I really like, these are Alka-Seltzer. This is Alka-Seltzer tablets that you just dump into your, your cup and pour some water in there and uh, that relieves all sorts of things. And I have a little portable mirror. Can you see yourself in that little mirror there? All right, so that's my toiletries bag. It's actually a toiletries slash medicine bag. This is a titanium cook pot. My Pathfinder water bottle, my stainless steel Pathfinder water bottle nests in this. But the reason why I'm carrying it inside the main compartment of my pack is because I'm carrying a couple other things within it and I like to carry it in that draw bag. Water treatment. These are iodine tablets and neutralizing tablets. They're within this cup for those of you who are just listening. And I have a bandana here wrapped around something where you reckon that is. That's my fire kit. Remember, I'm not carrying as much for my fire kit because I'm trying to pack lighter, uh, uh, much lighter in this, this smaller pack. Got cotton balls for fire tender and I've got about one, two, three, four really nice uh, fatwoods, which I've cut down. But why I say they're really nice is because I picked ones that were uh, especially impregnated with uh, resin. So I, I tried to pick out the ones that were the most impregnated with resin uh, to make it the easiest to get stubborn fires going. There it is, my wool sweater. There's a, a nice thick wool sweater. So even in the summertime, Early in the mornings, about four, five, six o'clock in the morning, shortly before the sun comes up, it can get awfully nippy. So uh, I figure in the in a in a wintertime circumstance, and I'm running out the door and I'm grabbing, you know, I'm on foot, and I'm grabbing my survival pack. Uh, if it's winter, I'm probably already wearing a jacket. So uh, it, it would just be nice to be able to supplement the coat that I'm probably already wearing with that wool sweater. The next thing I have in here is this. Now, I can't carry full blankets. I can't carry a five, five pound blanket. I can't carry you know, a sleeping bag and all this stuff that I would prefer to have in a winter situation to, to keep from freezing to death. So I have to come up with other ideas. And my, my other solution to this is to pack some wool long johns. These are the bottom parts of long johns in there because this is smart wool. They, they roll up into nothing. They don't take up a lot of space. But imagine being in a very cold... And, uh, so I've run out the door. I'm wearing a jacket, but I've only got this pack. Of course, for the purposes of this pack, I can't carry a big blanket or big wool blanket or anything like that. So how, how do I make up for that? Well, let's see. I get out there and it's get, starting to get cold. Take my wool sweater out. I supplement that underneath my jacket. I go find a private place, I strip my pants off, I put on these wool long johns, and I wear those underneath my pants. Think about how just that improves your odds of getting through a very cold night and really increases your comfort level. Instead of a toboggan, I've got a balaclava in here. And uh, the reason why I'm using a balaclava in this pack is because uh, the way it's made, it's, it's not as thick as like a big wool toboggan but it'll do the, the trick. Uh, it packs down really nicely and um, covers my mouth, covers my, my head, covers my ears. Cordage. There's a, uh, a pocket here on the inside. Within that pocket, I have a lighter. Last but not least, I've got this little pocket here on the front at the top of the bag. And this is where I keep things that I wanna be able to get easy access to. I have water flavoring and teas and uh, some instant coffee there. Uh, these water flavoring things are not just water flavoring, but um, they also uh, re are uh, electrolyte drinks. So, uh, 
when I get tired of drinking water or uh, I'm feeling run down or anything like that, I can drink some of those electrolyte drinks. Got another headlamp in here. My, my handheld flashlight. I found that, by the way, about 12, 13 years ago on a backpacking trip, and it's my favorite flashlight. Those That brand, that Lead Lenser brand, uh, I've looked that up. They're very expensive, but it's this particular design right here that I love so much. It's so minimal, uh, but, but so beautiful and effective at the same time. Very hardy. Here I carry a spoon. I'll show you these spoons that I really like. I've got three of these, and I like to take them backpacking, but I especially like to carry them in my survival bag. These are made out of titanium. And it's a fork on one end and a spoon on the one end. But the way they're made is just very, very robust. They don't bend on you or anything. Let me see. The brand is Human Gear Titanium. So if you're interested in some of those for yourselves, they're a little bit more expensive than the other ones, but uh, worth it. I, I really love the design of these things. Most of these types of things, like these survival spoon fork combos, what they do is the cur they curve opposite. So the, the spoon, of course, bends this way on these other ones I'm talking about. The spoon will bend this way, and the fork comes down and bends the opposite way. I don't like that design. I much prefer this design where they both bend the same way. It feels more natural in the hand when you're using it as either a fork or a spoon. And last but not least, right here. You know what I've got in here? This is a magnifying lens. And this is a, it's a survival magnifying lens specifically for being able to start fires. So I carry that in there and just in case nothing else works for me. I've always got backup. I've got uh, backups built into my system. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my survival pack if I'm on foot. Now, let's talk about the one last thing that we haven't talked about yet. What if you get separated from your pack? What if you get separated from your pack? If you get separated from your pack, then you still want to be prepared. You want to be prepared by what you have, whatever you have in your pockets. And of course, you can't carry huge blankets and all this elaborate stuff in your pockets. But I've gotten into the habit of carrying a few things all the time in my pockets. And I'll show you right now. I always carry a Swiss Army knife. That Swiss Army knife can do a lot more than you'd ever think it could. Really a lifesaver. This is, I can't remember what the one it is. It's, I think, maybe the Hunter Swiss Army Knife. It's got a main blade. It's got scissors. It's got a, a small saw on it. There's the small saw. Uh, it's got, uh, like I said, scissors. It's got can opener. Uh, it's got a, a corkscrew. It's got an awl. So, uh, really doesn't take up any space in the pocket I, I always have it with me uh, I've got my car keys and then I got two other items in my pocket I've got a, a pocket flashlight that I always carry now, I think light is underestimated and you don't want to really be using your phone light even though everybody's carrying smartphones in their pockets these days you really don't want to be running down your bat your phone battery as your main light source so you can buy these little tiny flashlights and they, they don't take up no space and then finally i've got this this is an emergency whistle which is also got a little compass there on the the end of it and you say well that little toy compass there that doesn't work but i've tested it out it's pretty accurate it's not just decoration it actually works and uh, tells direction proper so there's there's a whistle there emergency whistle I don't want to blow it, blow your eardrums out. And then you screw the bottom of it off and you've got there a ferrocerium rod. So think about what I've, if I get separated from my bag and all I have is what's in my pockets, uh, I'm not, I'm not completely handicapped. I can start a fire. I've got my knife. I can work with wood got a saw in there I can saw certain branches uh, you know th these little saws will do a lot more than you think they will I can use the blade to scrape bark 
you know, scrape the inside uh, of bark to get uh, tender to get a fire going and then I've got my ferrocerium rod there to strike uh, the tender get that fire going I got a flashlight if it gets dark on me I don't have to run down my phone battery simply to use it as a as a flashlight at night so I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the practical woodsman let me know in the comments what you think and um, let's get, get some conversation going about this I hope you've enjoyed it I hope I've given you some ideas and uh, and we'll talk we'll talk more in the next episode all right you folks take care Music.